Warning, this video contains explicit material not suitable for children. Tired of striking out with beautiful women? Looking to boost your number of sexual conquests? From the producers of Fifty Shades of Beige comes the next hottest thing in home video entertainment. Chug a bottle of male vitality formula and get ready, because here comes the info whores. I'm not bragging, it's actually shameful. Probably 150 women, or more, that's conservative. I had over 150 women. I was already dating college girls by the time I was 15 years old. I was already a man at 16. Get into your speedo and turn up your libido with Mr. Testosterone himself, Alex Jones. Excuse me. I think my testosterone's going up. This just happens every time I start working out a lot again. And I uh, swam two miles this morning pretty hard and uh, ate a big fat steak last night that's full of hormones, testosterone on its own right. So I'm going a little bit wild today. That's right. Take one part exercise, one part internet-based fake news, and one part gay frog juice rupees, and you've got a recipe for an irresistible dad bod. I just went ahead and did elliptical for about 30 minutes. I was watching Fox News this morning while I worked out for an hour. I can't help it. I start just saying, here, here's $50 bills. You ladies all have whatever you want. This is big, big, big mojo. Not feeling the women? No judgment from Alex. She is a demon. She is an abject, psychopathic demon from hell. Climb aboard and take a ride on the Prison Planet Express. You'll get the most sensual unmentionables you demand in Alex Bones It All. Paul Watson and I are gay lovers. We are gay reptoid space alien lovers. Material so hot that we can't even show it on television. Or the internet. Or anywhere ever who has asked entities to enter his body while having sex in large vats of feces with men peeing on it. Info whores and Alex Bones It All can be yours for just three easy payments of $49.99. Call now and get this exclusive bonus video, The Illuminati. Oh, yeah. Sex, grunting, and a healthy reminder to avoid the dangers of methamphetamines. It's the completely sane and non-serial killer Alex Jones in Info Whores, Alex Bones It All, and Illuminati. Still proudly available only on VHS. The previous products do not actually exist, nor are they endorsed by Alex Jones or Infowars. To order, send previously sterilized and boiled $2 bills wrapped in tinfoil by a carrier pigeon to Please steal my money, care of theft via nutritional supplements, medically insane Texas, zip codes or tools of the pedophile globalist government. and I'm disappointed in whoever did that. BlazeTV.com slash stew is the place to go to subscribe to Blaze TV. Get uh, the 10% off with the promo code stew. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, click like right now. Do it right now. Why not do it right now? It's been a few days uh, since I got a brand new addition to you of Stew Does the Polls. We'll do that here coming up today. The January 6th committee goes full Game of Thrones for their season finale. But we start by doing the threat to free speech. We had a little fun with Alex Jones and the weird things he said over the years that you can take a couple of different ways to start the show. But there's a real question about free speech I want to talk about today. Let me start, though, with Kanye West. Kanye West it has been in the news today for a very disturbing reason. Banking giant J.P. Morgan Chase has cut ties with Kanye West after a series of recent controversies, conservative commentator Candace Owens says. Here's what Candace tweeted earlier today. I learned that Kanye West was officially kicked out of J.P. Morgan Chase Bank. I was told there was no official reason given, but they sent this letter as well to confirm that he has until late November to find another place for the Yeezy Empire to bank. And here's the letter itself. We are sending this letter to confirm our recent discussion that J.P. Morgan Chase has decided to end its banking relationship with Yeezy LLC. Now look, I don't really care about Kanye West, not really a big fan. Uh, I know everyone says he's a genius. You have to see that one play out. I really didn't like the anti-Semitic nonsense he was spouting the other day. But you know what? I feel like in America you should be able to go to a bank whether I agree with you or not whether I like your music or not, whether I agree with your opinions or not, whether you're an anti-Semite or not, you get to go to the bank in this country. At least that's how it's always been. People have 
really bad ideas sometimes. And that doesn't mean that we ostracize them from society. At least, I mean, you can ostracize them from your relationships. You can say, I don't want to hang out with that person. I don't want to consume that person's content. But to eliminate them from the financial realm, to not allow them to spend or receive money, uh, that is a bigger issue. You know, we have rules uh, in the Constitution that talk about this for states, right? The Commerce Clause is been wildly overused over the years. But one of the fundamental things our country did was to to make sure that we didn't have states set up fighting against other states. If one state doesn't like another state, they can't limit the commerce in between those states because this is a United States of America. And there's something about that that I think trickles down to the people as well. You should be able to participate in basic functions uh, without having your life canceled over it. Let's go now into Alex Jones. Now, I want to start with this because at times we forget there's been a lot of these shootings, unfortunately, a lot of really sad moments we've had in this country. But Sandy Hook was kind of uniquely horrible. Uh, If you're going to name maybe the worst incident that you've seen as far as mass shootings or mass killings, people going down in parade routes and running over people, there's a lot of terrible things that have happened in this country and all over the world. I mean, twice as many people were killed in a Taiwanese mass shooting very recently. But when you're talking about the, uh, the American situation, Sandy Hook kind of stands out to me. I, I don't know what it is. The details of it are absolutely horrible. Uh, these kids were six and seven years old in a completely awesome, innocent age where they just are happy all the time and, and love life. And then to, for all of this to happen uh, right at that time is inc- incredibly impossible to even believe that it occurred. And then to add on to that, we've seen so many things like, you know, Columbine. Oh, I'm a teenager and I'm upset because people are bullying me and blah, 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 blah. And they go in the school and they shoot the, the, the school up. Horrible, horrible thing. This one was kids that were six and seven years old, not not teenagers. And the guy who killed them didn't seem to have any real reason to do it. There wasn't like a, I'm angry at that school thing, even though that's not a good excuse. At least it gives you some sort of human understanding uh, to to, to figure out some sort of motivation. This was just like the guy's kind of crazy and just decided to go school, shoot up a middle school. I mean, it's really as bad as it gets And what these parents had to go through during the event and after it is incomprehensible for anybody who's a parent. Add on to that what occurred after, which was a lot of conspiracy theorists making their lives even more miserable for very, very long periods of time after. It's inexcusable. It's there's just nothing you can say about it. It it is uh, one of the worst things that we've seen in a very, very long time in this country. And. You know, if you may have you may have grasped this from the beginning of the show, but I'm not an Alex Jones fanboy. I'm not a person who particularly likes Alex Jones, his content, what he stands for, what he says, what he believes. I'm old enough to remember, and I know I'm going back way back in history, when Alex Jones was a left wing figure, when people on the left liked Alex Jones because people on the left thought George W. Bush took down the Twin Towers. 9-11 was an inside job, they say. At least that's what Alex said. And he said it over and over and over and over and over again. In fact, he's the father of that conspiracy theory. That's kind of his shtick. It's what brought him to popularity. Now, the left wants you to forget about that now because they want you to believe he's some hardcore right wing figure. But that's not who he has been. That's not where I mean, go back and look at pictures of this guy standing arm in arm with Cynthia freaking McKinney. This is not this is not a right wing figure for a very long time. This has all changed, and now we have to work. The right gets all the blame for everything this guy has ever said. But the reason why I'm bringing this up is because I'm about to defend Alex Jones, and I want you to know I'm not coming at this as a from a place of like, oh well, I just love this guy, and I want him, uh, I want to back him up. I don't like necessarily backing him up. I don't like the things he says. I don't like his theories. I don't believe his theories. I think a lot of stuff he does is nonsense. I know I'm not. I'm not. Uh, not everybody is on that uh, page at this point. But that's where I am. I don't like the guy. I don't like what he what he does. So let's start with the ruling against Alex Jones, because it not only affects Alex Jones and the people who work for him and his fans, but also affects you in a way. Let's start with the beginning here. Can we all stop and agree the amount is completely ridiculous? Uh, Fifty million dollars here in Texas and then up in Connecticut, 
$965 million is the lawsuit. $965 million is what he supposedly uh, needs to pay. The, we told the truth, Sandy Hook families win $1 billion from Alex Jones. Now, this isn't exactly right. It's over a billion dollars already. And in addition to that, he has another section of sentencing as far as financial pe- penalties going here with this case. So he's got, it's going to be even more. Then he's got a whole nother case on the way. So he's going to have to pay even more for that one. And God only knows what else. Now, of course, obviously, Alex Jones does not have this kind of cash. He does pretty well for himself. He's got a decent amount of money. He does not have $965 million in the bank. He kind of went through this um, uh, and on his show. I guess he was live streaming it as the verdict came out. He said, do these people actually think they're getting any money? Jones denounces the verdict and fundraises off of it. Um, He said he planned to hold an emergency broadcast for more than 16 hours, which sounds like a treat, uh, to save Infowars, he said, urging people to flood us with donations. For hundreds of thousands of dollars, I can keep them in court for years. I can appeal this stuff. Mr. Jones repeated the contested claim that he and his company, the Infowars parent free speech systems, were almost completely out of money and that the plaintiffs can't get blood from a stone. I'm sure he's got some money. You know, he's being uh, attacked as uh, somebody who's hiding it. I don't know if that any of that is true. Uh, But what what I will say is that he has no chance of paying back that sort of uh, amount. I mean, it's it's completely ridiculous. Now, part of this is because at least the way the media is reporting this and I was not there for everything. But what they're saying basically is that he didn't really contest this. He didn't he didn't turn over the materials requested. He didn't show up for some stuff. And so he lost all of these cases basically by default. Now we're just figuring out how much money he's going to spend for the losses. But. Isn't it kind of ridiculous? $965 million. Now, in some ways, what these parents went through because of, uh, of the shooting and then the aftermath is it's impossible to measure in money. It is not, there's no amount of money that makes this better. And harassing parents who have their children who have just died in a shooting is so incomprehensibly terrible that, yeah, you know, it feels like something that should be a really high number. But can we... I mean, he, he talked about this story. People said really bad things. Is there any bad thing that is worth $965 million? I don't know. And the, this is the thing here. We kind of, uh, the coverage here sort of acts as if Alex Jones was the main source of all Sandy Hook conspiracy theories. Now, as I just mentioned, he was the main source of 9-11 conspiracy theories. That was him. It's, it was his entire rise to prominence was based on saying that 9-11 was an inside job and it didn't actually occur and they blew up Tower 7 and all the things you've heard over the years. That was his shtick. That's how he built his empire. If he owes $965 million to the 17 families in, uh, with Sandy Hook, I can't imagine how much he owes to the 9-11 victims. Uh, it's got to be trillions this guy will be uh, this guy will be like almost a Biden stimulus plan worth of worth of cash before this is over. But Alex Jones was not the only source here. In fact, I I was not an everyday listener or really an any day listener to Alex Jones. I've seen clips of him over the years. But like I never thought of Alex Jones as the guy spreading this theory. This is a theory that was much larger, uh, largely spent, uh, spread on the Internet. It was a big Internet theory for a long time. Now, Alex Jones swims in these waters, right? Like he's a guy who talks about conspiracy theories. I imagine just like when we see a bad tweet from Adam Schiff, you know, he's, he's got some theory of the day and he's talking about whatever is the issue of the day in the conspiracy world is. I don't know. So he did talk about it. But it wasn't like his main shtick and it wasn't a main thing that he was talking about, at least as my impression was, for this entire decade since 2012. And and, and let me give you an example of this. This is one of the cases brought against him, one of the complaints against him, the petition against Alex Jones. And, uh, you know, it's it's rather lengthy. They give a bunch of examples of him mentioning uh, uh, of uh, the uh, Sandy Hook incident and many times saying things that you probably, as I would, deem terrible and awful and it's inexplicable that he didn't know that these things were wrong. He claims he believes he thought they were true. And look, the guy believes every conspiracy theory, right? There's, there has never been a flag that is not a false flag in the world of Alex Jones. So I totally believe that he believed this was fake. I mean, this is just what he does with every story. So, of course, that's what he believes. But 
This is the entire complaint. I went through the entire complaint just to see how many examples do they have of him talking about this? I mean, is, is this something he was doing every day? Now, if you've ever watched the uh, documentary television show Suits, you know how lawsuits work. Basically, a lawsuit comes in and then a couple of really smart people go into a basement and they read all these uh, these, uh, you know, back old legal cases and old precedents and go through transcripts and all this stuff. And just as they're about to give up and they have no path forward, they suddenly come up with a perfect quote from one of those transcripts that makes them turn the case on its head and then they win all the money. That's how it works in suits. But millions and millions and millions of dollars have been spent to try to take out Alex Jones with these lawsuits. They went through, I'm sure, every single broadcast that they could find. They put paralegals on it. They put other people on it so they could watch everything that they could find. This is everything that is in the complaint. Everything. Here we go. April 22nd, 2017. April 28th, 2017 was mentioned. June 13th, 2017. June 18th, 2017. And another one on June 18th, 2017 that was on InfoWars, but not actually Alex Jones, some other host. Then, one time in 2013, four times in 2014, four times in 2015, and twice in 2016. Now, if you go through the transcripts of Stu Does America and the Glenn Beck program and the wonderful world of Stu, what you will find is zero uh, pieces of evidence that I have ever doubted the these, uh, these Sandy Hook shooting because I believed it. I believed that it actually occurred on the day it occurred. It was a wild, crazy approach to the story. So, yes, I would acknowledge that he's done some stuff wrong. You know who else would acknowledge it? He would acknowledge it. He's apologized for being wrong on this story and repeating a lot of this nonsense. He brought on guests here and there that would say things that, you know, were supporting the Sandy Hook conspiracy theories. It's not as if he did nothing here that was uh, incorrect coverage of the story. But, like, they went through all of his archives and they found, what, 20 times in a decade he talked about it? What, why do we assume that every time a parent in, from Sandy Hook was harassed, it was because of Alex Jones? I mean, he's one guy... A long time ago, he was the main conspiracy guy. Have you looked at the internet lately? There's a lot of them. Anyone can go on the internet and find this stuff. Whether Alex Jones existed or not, people would still believe the Sandy Hook conspiracy theory and still sadly harass these parents who don't deserve it at all. It's important to understand that there's this weird effort put forward to try to just make it seem like Alex Jones caused every negative side effect that came from Sandy Hook. That's just not true. And I think... We all know that's not true. I think all their lawyers also know it's not true. So what is going on here? First of all, we have to find the right person to punish. It's important to understand this because this is a fundamental thing that is important in our society. If I were to say to you right now, the McRib should be a food item on McDonald's menu all the time. Not a temporary item, not a once in a while thing. The McRib must be on this menu and I'm pissed off about it. We need to fight. We need to tell McDonald's to get this back on their menu all the time right now. If in two weeks, some nut job in this audience, and I know most of you are, goes into a McDonald's with a gun and threatens the manager because they don't have McRibs on the menu, I am not responsible for that behavior. Let me tell you who is. You. If you're the idiot that went into the McDonald's with a gun to request the McRib, you're the problem here. You're the one committing the crime. Alex Jones, even if he did talk about this all the time, is not responsible for one of his listeners if... That we, we don't even know if they were his listeners, but if it was one of his listeners going crazy and harassing a parent... That is their responsibility. The person who did it is responsible for their actions. That's how our society is supposed to work here. Just because so, you should be able to make passionate arguments about things that you believe in, right or wrong, and not be responsible for every person who takes it some weird way and does something terrible on top of it. If Alex Jones went to their house and harassed them, he'd deserve some punishment for it. But does he deserve that this sort of punishment because in theory, maybe some of his f fans harassed these people online? It's terrible. They should be punished for it. But should he like this? Does that make sense? 
When someone makes a threat, the person who makes the threat is the person who should be punished, not the book they read that led to the threat. That is, a, I think, a fundamental part of free speech, and it's really, really important. And finally, you should understand that, yes, this tactic will be used on you in some way, whether you like Alex Jones or you don't. It's important to understand that this approach, which has been the same approach was attempted with with Alex Jones on social media. And now it's hit many other conservatives. And the same thing will happen to you or someone you listen to down the road. These giant lawsuits going after people for things that they said online. uh, And in my uh, my belief for him, at least he honestly believed a lot of these things, even though, you know, I think he's an idiot for believing it. For people going down those roads, they will start to get sued. They will start to be taken out. And this is not an attempt to go after Alex Jones because they care if Alex Jones says his crazy conspiracy theories online. That's not what this is about. This is about trying to silence other voices. Remember, the media sees Alex Jones exactly the same way that they see The Blaze or National Review or Breitbart or Daily Wire or Daily Caller or any other conservative publication. They see it as poison and the enemy and lies and propaganda and fake news and all of those things. So when they go after Alex Jones, yeah, you might say Alex Jones. Look, he he said things that I I find to be completely despicable. But that same approach is going to be used to shut up a voice that you respect. Maybe you, maybe your voice online. If this works, which in this case it has. They will attempt to expand it. This is what the left does. They find a tactic, they beat it into the ground for as long as it works, and then they move on to something else. And all of these approaches are designed for the same thing, to try to take out your voice, to make sure you're not heard. So whether you like Alex Jones or you're not, you have to sit back and recognize that this truly is a threat to free speech. Genucel is the best in skincare. Julia from Arlington, Texas writes in. She says, I began using Genucel's most popular package recently. I went in to get a facial and the technician said I have impeccable skin. And she's seen 20 year olds that don't have skin as nice as mine. Julia was blown away by the results. She saw it with Genucel. I know my wife loves Genucel. My mom loves Genucel. And for right now, you can get results for yourself with Genucel's most popular package, just like Julia. For a limited time, most popular packages are 70% off. Plus, you'll get GenuCell's customer favorite acid correcting serum. That's free. GenuCell's most popular package treats tens of millions of everyday skin problems like wrinkles, dark spots, dry skin, sagging jawline, and even those annoying bags and puffiness for men and women just like you. And with its immediate effects, GenuCell guarantees results in as little as 12 hours or your money back. Visit GenuCell.com slash stew, GenuCell.com slash stew for a limited time. Your most popular package order includes a complimentary gift set with your subscription plus free express shipping. Genucel.com, G-E-N-U-C-E-L.com slash stew. Genucel.com slash stew. We are less than a month away from Election Day, and we're going to take a look at the polls. Stu does the polls. Yes, we're going to go through what the most recent polls are, uh, kind of bounce around between some governor polls, some uh, Senate polls as well. Let's start in the Senate, Wisconsin, Ron Johnson, 52, Mandela Barnes, ah, 46. Yes, Ron Johnson up by six points. And what we like to do with these is kind of give you a state of the race and where this poll sort of falls in our impression of where the poll, uh, the state of the race is, right? So if we're thinking it's a tie, maybe the Republican does, has a good poll, we're going to tell you it's good. If it's going to be, if the poll is tied, it's about neutral. If it's uh, the other, the Democrat winning, usually we're going to think of that as a negative. That's, uh, that's the way we think here. You might think the opposite. But anyway, this Ron Johnson poll is pretty good. Uh, this is a good poll for Ron Johnson. Up six is about as big as a, of a lead as we've seen. He's opened up a lead here. You see one of the things you'll notice about this poll is there's almost nobody who's undecided, 
which is interesting. Not a lot of room for Mandela Barnes to, uh, to make up. And obviously, with Johnson over 50 percent, there's no way he can win the race if this poll is accurate. Mandela Barnes is taking a beating on his past cr uh, stances on crime. Wisconsin knows all about that. They've seen a lot of it, unfortunately. And uh, they don't want somebody who wants to defund the police, even though now Mandela Barnes denies he said that. Let's go over to Georgia and the governor race there. Uh, this is uh, Brian Kemp versus Stacey Abrams. We have a couple of polls from this race, first from Quinnipiac, which has been pretty favorable for Democrats this cycle. And they have uh, Brian Kemp still winning 50 to 49. Kemp up by one point in that race. This is about as bad a poll as we've seen for Brian Kemp in a while. Uh, he's been leading by several points and this one only by one point, though. You know, look, when your bad poll is a poll that you're still winning in. You take that as a pretty good sign, I guess. In fact, there's another poll that came out and giving you the total opposite side of this race. Brian Kemp, 51. Stacey Abrams, 41. A 10-point lead for Brian Kemp. Now, my belief is that's closer to accurate than the Quinnipiac poll. This one is from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. And this is a good poll, certainly, for Brian Kemp. In fact, it's probably the best poll I have seen for Brian Kemp. A 10-point lead would be a real statement, especially with George Soros pouring in millions and millions of dollars into that race in support of Stacey Abrams. Let's go uh, to Texas. This is where we are right now. Greg Abbott going against Beto O'Rourke, Robert Francis O'Rourke. And this one is uh, has Greg Abbott at 52, Beto O'Rourke at 44. This is from Marist, a pretty good pollster. And we have this poll rated as neutral as far as our understanding of the race. I think... You know, you could have gone with good on this, an eight-point lead for Abbott over Beto, though I would really like to see him clear double digits somehow because Beto is, sucks. Nobody should vote for Beto. Beto should have zero points. It should be a triple-digit victory for Abbott, 100 to zero. That's the appropriate poll that should come out. Until that one comes out, I'm not marking any of them good in the Beto race. But we have seen a couple polls where Abbott was only up by a couple points. Uh, that's not, not the case here, an eight-point lead. It's on the, the good end of neutral as far as our understanding of the state of the race. This one might be the craziest one so far, and there's a little bit of an asterisk with it, unfortunately, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. This is our Oregon's governor race, and there's a three-way race. We talked about it uh, last week. Basically, you have a Republican, uh, Christine Drazen, Tina Kotek, the Democrat, and Betsy Johnson, former Democrat, running as an independent. Uh, Nike uh, owner Phil Knight came into this race big time with lots of cash, threw all this money at Betsy Johnson. She was able to rise, uh, it was millions and millions of dollars, was able to rise into the uh, high double digits. And uh, then it looked, he apparently made the decision, okay, I really don't want Tina Kotek in there. And it doesn't look like Betsy Johnson's going to win. I'm going to switch over to Christine Drazen and dump my money over there. Now this, the one thing I will tell you before I give you the results here is this is from Clout Research and it's a Republican pollster. So usually what we do is we take some of the, you take one grain of salt with if, if it's a Republican or a Democratic uh, poll. If it's an internal poll, you take like 10 grains of salt. You, you just chug the bottle of salt. But this is a Republican leading poll, so take it for what it's worth. But Christine Drazen, 44. Tina Kotek, 38. A six point lead. Again, probably the biggest lead I've seen. I can't remember the last time a, a, a Republican in Oregon had a six-point lead in a scientific poll um, at any point <laughs> during any race statewide. And Bessie Johnson, you see, falling off there down to 11. So it seems like a decent amount of people sort of went behind Phil Knight and made that switch from Betsy Johnson to Christine Drazen. Uh, so that is a really, really good result in Oregon. Let's go over to the governor's race in New York. Now, we haven't spent a ton of race as time on this race. As you may know on this program, we have spent a lot of time talking about the governor of New York, usually the last one, uh, Andrew Cuomo, because if you might know this, Andrew Cuomo is awful. Dot com. Lee Zeldin is going against Kathy Hochul there. Republican is Lee Zeldin. Now, we told you about a poll from Trafalgar not too long ago that had Lee Zeldin only down by two points. And I told you it was too good to be true. And that might very well be the case here. However, this race is holding up as closer than you would expect. Ha Kathy Hochul, 52. Lee Zeldin, 44. An eight-point lead in New York for a Democrat? Really? That is not what you want to see if you're a Democrat looking at the national picture here when it comes to elections. This is a very good poll. I mean, I, you know, I, I know it might seem like a bad poll because we just told you about one that was only a two-point difference. That poll does seem like an outlier, but I don't know. It backs it up a little bit. 
here when we see an eight point margin. Could this race be closer, similar to what we saw in New Jersey last cycle when there was a very close race in New Jersey uh, for uh, what was that uh, senator? That was a governor's race. Uh, the governor's race was much closer in New Jersey than anyone expected. Could the same thing be repeating itself in New York? I hope so. Because Kathy Hochul, while she's not Andrew Cuomo, is not good either. Uh, now we go to Georgia, maybe the most talked about race in the country. We're getting our first examples of polling after the quote unquote scandal. Now I say quote unquote because Herschel Walker is denying that this occurred. Uh, it was interesting because he at first said, I don't even know who this is. And that was before any really any information came out about who the person was. Then it came out that it was a person that he fathered a different child with. And uh, Herschel Walker said, oh, I know what it is, yes, and she's lying, she's absolutely lying. So, I, you know, again, ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, not always the most trustworthy source. I don't know if this is true or not. The Daily Beast, which I, as I've pointed out, the Daily Beast, not a trustworthy source for most things. Um, the Daily Beast is a, the type of situation where like they put in their, on their website, a greeting card from Herschel Walker with just the H of his name. Now, he says he doesn't sign his name like that. I don't know if that's true or not. But they keep saying they have receipts for these abortions, but they didn't put them in the article, which is kind of weird, right? I mean, I, I don't know. The whole thing's really, really weird. Did this happen? I don't know. Will the American people, and particularly the people in Georgia, care? It's a whole other question. So we have two polls that kind of answer this question two different ways. Do, is there movement in this race uh, post-scandal? Well, the first poll says, mm, yeah, there was. 52 to 45, Raphael Warnock leading, according to Quinnipiac. Again, Quinnipiac has been very Democratic-leaning in this cycle for whatever reason. Uh, they have Warnock up seven. This is a terrible result for Herschel Walker. If this is the state of the race, they, he's in real trouble there. That's a bad poll. However, uh, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, which seemingly having results much more in the mainstream of other polling, has this race at 46 to 43, Warnock by three. In a toss-up race, it's 46-43. In a toss-up race, uh, we have this as a neutral poll, not really changing our understanding of it. But in a way, what you could say about this poll is that it's a good result because the polls haven't moved all that much. Now, we have seen polls where Herschel Walker was ahead. And if he's really behind by three points, he's going to have some making up to do. The one thing I will say about Georgia, and this is an encourage, one encouraging thing about Georgia if you're worried about this scandal, and I know most people aren't in the audience, but if you happen to be like, oh, gosh, I mean, you know, Bill O'Reilly was on the show the other day, and he's like, I think Herschel Walker's toast after this. I don't know how he can recover. And maybe that's true. But one thing I will say is Georgia's system might work in the favor of Herschel Walker. They have this debate, I think it's uh, Monday, I believe is the first, is it? No, that Mike Lee debate might be Monday. He's got one, one debate coming up here. Um, I can't remember what date it is, uh, but th that'll be a big moment. And that might shake some of the scandal loose as well as there being a third party in this race. If you can keep Raphael Warnock under 50%, you go to a runoff. We all remember the runoff situation from, uh, the 2020 election. If you do that, you're going to have several more weeks of distance between the scandal and the actual election. So if, if it's 48-45, uh, Herschel Walker finishes in second, but Raphael Warnock does not clear 50, there will be another election, I think it's early to mid-December, where they will have a runoff, and that will actually decide that seat. So that one probably, good chance, will not be decided on election night. We'll keep watching all that closely and keep you up to date with all of the polls because we're nerds here. We like numbers, we like charts. Conservative nerds, unite! Back in a second. You know, buying or selling a home is stressful, especially in this environment. What's going to happen tomorrow? You know, you saw they, they came out today. They said, oh, the uh, Medicare or the uh, Social Security payments are going up by 8.7 percent. What a wonderful thing, said the White House. Uh, is it a wonderful th That just means you've done a terrible job on inflation. It's a, it's a mathematical equation. Well, who knows what's going to happen? What are these giant hikes in interest rates going to mean for the market? You better have the best real estate agent that you can find. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to find that person, uh, someone who's responsible, someone who knows the market, someone who can take your concerns seriously, someone who will not put you into like the worst neighborhood in town or the neighborhood that on Tuesdays starts smelling like manure. You know, I don't know, whatever the issue is locally, the real estate agent will know this. Realestateagentsitrust.com is the place to go to find the best real estate agent in your area, whether you're buying or selling a home or both. Realestateagentsitrust.com. It's realestateagentsitrust.com.
Well, if you're thinking some of those polls are not the way that you want them to be, then you have to, of course, rock the vote. At least that's what they used to tell us when we were watching MTV in the 90s. Rock the vote, everybody. Rush to the polls, knowledge or not, and cast your vote for, of course, the Democrat. That was basically the pitch of every teenager's life if you grew up in the 80s or 90s. Um, But the rock the vote thing is nonsense. You shouldn't go rock the vote. In fact, you shouldn't vote at all if you don't know what you're talking about. This is why we always say learn, then vote. Learn, then vote. The order is important. Go to learnthenvote.com. We've got the uh, T-shirts up as well. Uh, Learn, then vote. The order is important. Wear it to the polls. People will be very annoyed with you, and they won't like you very much. And those people you probably don't want to be friends with anyway. Learnthenvote.com. If you use the code STU10, you can save 10% off the merch right now. All the merch on the site is available with 10% off if you use the code STU10. Learnthenvote.com. And we also have the 62422 uh, merch, uh, which, of course, is fantastic, uh, celebrating the day that Roe versus Wade was overturned. But you know what? Don't go buy that today. Don't go buy that from us. Save that money and instead give it to Preborn because Preborn is awesome. Preborn is a, an organization that is fighting for the lives of babies. You know, over 63 million babies have been aborted since Roe versus Wade. 63 million. And of course, it's still happening today. You know, it hasn't stopped, unfortunately. Uh, Preborn and Blaze Media are working together, trying to help rescue 50,000 babies from abortion in 2022. They're working to put Planned Parenthood out of business and provide free ultrasounds to expecting mothers. 80% of the time, when they hear the heartbeat, they don't go through with the abortion. That's really important. And when they do choose life, Preborn provides maternity and baby clothes, diapers, car seats, counseling, and much more free of charge. They are very committed to the preservation of life. Over the past 15 years, preborn centers have counseled over 450,000 women considering abortion. 188,000 babies have been saved. Will you help? To donate, dial pound 250 and use the keyword baby. Pound 250, the keyword is baby. Or go to preborn.com slash stew, preborn.com slash stew. So the season finale of the January 6th committee is, uh, was today, apparently. This is their last pitch. Their big uh, reveal was to vote to subpoena Donald Trump, which I'm sure he's going to show up for. He's probably already there, just waiting to be, they just, he just wants to testify so badly. You're going to be shocked to hear they voted unanimously. Yeah, even the Republicans on the committee, who are totally dedicated to, to the truth on this matter, they even voted to subpoena Donald Trump. I know it's shocking, and I'm stunned as much as you are. Um, you're also going to be st- shocked that it seems like the Biden administration may have been lying a little bit about their whole, uh, we didn't talk to them at all about oil when, the, when they went over there to talk to the Saudis. The Saudis are now saying, hey, um, you know, no one mentioned the November 8th election, but they did ask us to delay the cuts for a month. Now, why on earth would they do such a thing? They wanted to start it in the middle of the, of the winter? That's what, <laughs> that's the pitch. They want you please start the production cut in the middle of the winter in December. No, of course, it has to do directly with the election. And this is uh, some strange, uh, some strange outgrowths from uh, from the craziness that goes on on the left. Let me give you another example of that. Politico wanted to honor a climate influencer of the year. When, it, when you're talking about the power players behind Europe's green agenda, who would that be? Some uh, president, maybe the hot lady from Finland or something? I don't know. No, not her. Number one, Vladimir Putin. Yes, Vladimir freaking Putin won the award. Uh, why did they give the award? Politico argues that the war in Ukraine has been great for the environment because it forced Europe to finally break its fossil fuel addiction and helped speed up the continent's green revolution. That is incredible. Uh, The war has, quote, achieved something generations of green campaigners could not. That is psychotic. Look, it's true that really terrible things that happen to the average everyday person are really good, really, really good for people who are in the green movement. 
you know, the, the COVID pandemic. Everybody shut down from work. What happened? Well, actually, emissions went up slightly, but still they didn't go up as much as they would have otherwise gone up. Uh, the same thing happens with wars. People got to they, they don't everything gets blown up. They can't they, they can't run their uh, no one has any power. Well, that's great. A wonderful thing. Now we're giving Vladimir Putin the credit for moving Europe off of fossil fuels. Incre- absolutely incredible. I mean, what happened to poor Greta? Greta. Oh, Greta. Even Greta's now starting to say, hey, nuclear power may be a good idea. I don't know, guys. Should we do that? Even Greta's saying it. That's how nuts we are right now. And I want to give you this because I absolutely love the story and I love whoever this person is. I don't know anything about him. Will he milkshake duck me in two weeks? Probably. But I still love him more than anything. It's a guy who heard about a gun buyback program and thought, you know what's really dumb? A gun buyback program. And he read all the rules of the gun buyback program and realized they are saying they will give me, um, it's like $300, $350 for a a piece of a gun, a part of a gun. In this particular case, uh, a small device that would convert a firearm into a fully automatic firearm. They also gave them uh, gave it a hundred dollar premium if you had a ghost gun. It was a ghost gun with no serial number. OK, we know this has been a shtick from the left for a long time. They want to get ghost guns off the street. They want to stop bump stocks and other things that turn uh, regular weapons into automatic weapons. Well, this guy is just freaking brilliant. And I'm I'm s- I can't even you're not some jealousy is bad. Envy is a sin. But I can't tell you how jealous I am. How did I not think of this idea? I'm so angry that I did not think of this idea. He decided to print up the tiny little pieces with 3D printers, and he made $21,000 from the gun buyback. What a freaking genius this guy is. Uh, he, uh, the seller who de- declined to provide his real name, probably a good idea, said in an email on Monday that the prospect of making money was enticing, but that the big reason he took part in the buyback was to send a message. He called the idea of buybacks ridiculously stupid, adding that the people running this event are horribly uneducated about guns, gun crime, and the laws surrounding the regulation of guns. Yes! An American hero. Right here, an American hero, $21,000 for 3D printed plastic he took from these idiots in New York. I mean, uh, we're not worthy. The Philadelphia Phillies have won a playoff series. I think they're 1-1 in the current series here as we go uh, move on through the playoffs. Uh, I'm not going to mention the Toronto Blue Jays America's team because uh, my soul is still crushed from their uh, horrific defeat the other day. So let's just forget about that. But worse than that could be a Phillies World Series appearance. Why? Well, when they win or go to the World Series, the entire economy seems to fall apart. This goes back. They've been there four times, 1929. 19th, of course, we know the stock crash, 1929, 1930s, still in the uh, sort of Great Depression era that sort of double bounced down. 1980, which was a rough, rough year, we got a double digit inflation rates and oh, near 20 percent. And 2008, the financial crisis. These are the years they've been in the uh, World Series. So will this uh, happen again? If they go this year, will our entire lives fall apart financially? I don't know. But uh, yes, because this one article told me so. Uh, Let's get to some of your comments. Five stars is the appropriate number of stars. Uh, Max amount of stars. Finally realized I'm a BLM supporter. Bergier's life matters. Without a stupid show, we'd all be less informed, sarcasm deficient, and chartless. Thank heaven for Stu Does America. Thank you so much. Make sure you review if you're listening on podcast. And uh, let's go to some of the comments on YouTube as well. You can always uh, comment an algorithmic engagement comment below the show. It helps the show. Click like, by the way, if you're listening right now and click subscribe and the bell and all the things. We do appreciate it. Derek writes, Stu was giving serious Andrew Cuomo vibes when he was trying the Mountain Dew voodoo. I'm getting notes of a mandarin orange and white grape. Yes, definitely white grape. I think that was it. I think I nailed it. I don't know if hydrangea was really in that Andrew Cuomo clip. We'll have to go back and watch it. James says, I missed the live hands under the talking head video screen bit, even though I know a lot of folks here don't really get it. Yeah, some people around here didn't get it either. Plus, everyone had COVID and was dying at home, so we didn't have enough people to do it anymore. But we do like that as well. Ben says, if we have a slight recession, then I'm going to pay slightly lower taxes. Yeah, in fact, you might have to pay any taxes. If we have no money at all, we can all pay zero percent. Isn't that wonderful? We'll see you tomorrow.